It's easy to think of space as being this completely empty and desolate region, however some parts are anything but empty. The space around most stars usually contains a considerable amount of dust left over from the star's formation. This dust clumps into rocks before smashing together to form bigger rocks. Eventually some large rocks collide to form rocky planets, but not every rock remains within the orbit of its parent star. Some are rogue and are displaced by other gravitational influences. While not as large as a planet, these rogue rocks can come in a range of different shapes and sizes and travel at extremely high velocities across space. We refer to these high speed collision rocks as asteroids and they are a big concern for us as we try to prevail as a frail species on the surface of a rocky planet. A few weeks ago, an asteroid named 2019 OK hurtled past the Earth and approached closer than the orbit of the Moon, coming as close as 45,000 miles away from the surface before narrowly missing and flying away. Like most asteroids, 2019 OK passed by Earth without colliding and so it wasn't a problem. However, had the trajectory been slightly different, the outcome might have been too. If 2019 OK had collided with the planet, it would have done so with the energy of 30 times the nuclear bomb that devastated Hiroshima. What's even more unsettling is that this asteroid, dubbed a city destroyer by scientists, went completely undetected until just days before it was due to pass by the planet. This near miss led many to question just how capable we are at defending ourselves against asteroids that are on a more precise trajectory and heading our way. If a considerably large asteroid was due to collide with the Earth, could we stop it? And furthermore, do we have the technology to prevent a full-scale global apocalypse? Following the near miss with 2019 OK, the first question on everyone's minds was how did we fail to detect it? We have networks of ground based telescopes, radio telescopes and radar systems, not to mention all the satellites in space. One would assume that, given we are able to survey galaxies billions of light years away, we would be able to detect an asteroid flying around our solar neighbourhood. Well, the problem is that 2019 OK came from the direction of the Sun, meaning the asteroid surface that was facing us was not illuminated enough to be detectable by instruments from Earth. This combined with the vastness of space means detecting asteroids becomes quite difficult if they originate from a certain area of the sky. The main objects zipping around our solar system are clumps of ice, iron and rock. The large majority of these objects orbit the Sun in belts and most are on the outer rim of the solar system but those that are close enough to grab our attention are known as Near Earth Objects, or NEOs. These objects can be broken down into three groups. Meteors are one such type of object. These are small, mostly harmless rocks that start life as debris drifting around space, known as meteoroids. If such an object enters the orbit of the Earth, they become known as meteors. If they enter our atmosphere, they will usually burn up and become visible to the naked eye. We refer to these glowing shards of rock as shooting stars, but when these meteors collide with the planet's surface, they are called meteorites. Approximately 500 of these meteorite pieces of debris strike the Earth every year, but most fall into the ocean and are not nearly big enough to cause a problem. The second type of near-Earth object comes in the form of comets. These bodies are mostly ice and typically emerge in the outer solar system but are attracted to the gravity of the Sun and are usually shredded up when they approach close enough. The shredded pieces can be a threat, but this is extremely rare. The most substantial type of stellar object is an asteroid. These are larger bodies of rock that could do more damage if they collided with the Earth. Some of these asteroids are big enough to become what are known as minor planets, such as Ceres, but most are just large space boulders that are hurtling around the solar system. Most of the asteroids and other rocks in the solar system that could threaten the Earth lie within the asteroid belt, an orbital ring of ice and rock beyond the orbit of Mars and Jupiter, consisting of millions of rocks in varying shapes and sizes. As such, if any of these rocks are displaced, they will invariably be attracted to the godfather of our solar system, Jupiter. Jupiter formed very early on after the Sun was formed, so was able to collect up a lot of the remaining hydrogen and dust left over from the Sun's formation. This gives it a large mass and strong gravity field, and its proximity to the asteroid belt acts as an essential attractor for asteroids that might otherwise pulverise the smaller rocky planets. However, there are still over 20,000 NEOs which orbit within about a third of an astronomical unit from the Earth, and although it is a rare occurrence, they do sometimes end up coming our way. 
Luckily, Jupiter isn't the only line of defence Mother Nature has provided us with against asteroids. An asteroid's main threat isn't actually its mass per se, it's the speed at which it travels. Therefore, most asteroids that do enter the atmosphere of the Earth do so with such force that the atmospheric layer acts the same way a hard surface would, meaning the inbound object will be smashed up into smaller pieces, like meteoroids. Any rocky visitor to the Earth under 10 metres in diameter will usually end up this way. The largest asteroid to enter the atmosphere every year on average is about 2-3 to three metres wide. However, there are those that are occasionally larger, like 2019 OK. Such an asteroid, perhaps between 25 and 50 metres, could easily wipe out an entire city. Anything above 100 metres is deemed a country destroyer, and if any asteroid larger than that hit us, you're talking continental scale damage, if not a global catastrophe. Whilst cataclysmic impacts are extremely rare, they do happen, and there is a far increased risk of death and destruction nowadays as our societies are much denser in urban areas than in previous generations. The number of megacities with over 10 million residents is increasing rapidly, and before long over half the global population is expected to live in dense urban areas. As you might expect, this gives us an elevated level of fragility. This was evident on Valentine's Day of 2013 when an asteroid hit Russia, injuring 1,600 people. But interestingly, it wasn't the actual impact that caused the damage. It was the asteroid breaking up in the atmosphere which generated a shockwave which shattered windows and damaged buildings in the surrounding area. So whilst our atmosphere protects us from large asteroids, it can actually work against us as our populations increase and our infrastructures develop. In fact, the impact of an asteroid itself is actually the least of our worries. Violent winds, dust and tsunamis are all knock-on effects from asteroid impacts that are predicted to do far more damage than the asteroid itself. The force at which an asteroid strikes is most evident in South Africa. The Vredefort Crater is the largest known crater on Earth, with a diameter of over 118 miles. Such a collision at the time would have profoundly altered the face of the planet and is a chilling reminder of the power of visitors from space. It is estimated that an asteroid large enough to cause a planetary catastrophe strikes every few million years, and this is true of all the rocky planets in the solar system. This leads you to an inescapable eventuality. An asteroid that can wipe out mankind striking the planet is not a case of if, it's a case of when. Chicxulub, Mexico is another place where the sheer power and uncertainty of asteroid impacts is evident. It was here that one of the most dominant species in the history of the planet was completely decimated by a massive asteroid, the dinosaurs. Dinosaurs roamed the earth for hundreds of millions of years. They beat natural selection and made their mark on the planet's surface. But in an instant, a species that ruled the planet for longer than any other known type of creature was wiped out in one single catastrophic strike. As mentioned, Jupiter usually acts as a life-saving asteroid magnet for the inner solar system, but not always. Sometimes it can do quite the opposite, and this is exactly what happened when Jupiter's gravity dislodged this asteroid from the asteroid belt and sent it barreling towards the planet. Based on the size of the crater in Mexico and taking into account the average speeds that asteroids enter the Earth's atmosphere at, we can conclude that this particular asteroid was around 10 kilometers in diameter and was traveling at over 12 miles per second when it struck. This means that it would have collided with the Earth with the force of over 1 million times that of the most powerful nuclear bomb ever made. Everything within a 1,000 km radius of the impact would have been completely destroyed instantly due to the fireball it produced, and before long, the planet was sealed in a bubble of pure hell. When an asteroid of large enough size hits the surface of the Earth, it displaces a huge amount of material and debris into the atmosphere. This asteroid released over 300 billion tonnes of sulphur, which would have totally enveloped the planet in a huge cloud covering of ash soot and debris, sealing off the sun entirely and causing a nuclear winter. 
During a nuclear winter, debris is ejected into the stratosphere and this blocks the sun's radiation, preventing light and heat from reaching the surface of the Earth. This causes the global temperature to drop significantly, causing mass die-offs of species. It also disrupts food chains and photosynthesis, causing organic plants and vegetation to die out too. Anything left alive would have to be in landlocked areas as catastrophic tsunamis beyond anything imaginable would have ravaged the coastal regions. When the asteroid that hit Chicxulub struck, three quarters of all the life on Earth died including all of the dinosaurs, thus concluding the reign of the most dominant species in the Earth's history. Hypotheses now suggest that a substantial nuclear winter would spell certain death for at least a quarter of the global population, on top of those killed by the initial impact. You're talking casualties in their billions. Food supplies would be disrupted, the bees would disappear, and mass die-offs of humans would be inevitable, especially in developing or resource-scarce nations. It would completely change the global climate and revert the surface of the planet to a ball of exposed molten rock, changing humanity as we know it, if not wiping us out altogether. So the question is, if such an asteroid was headed for Earth today, would we be able to stop it with the technology we have? Despite the uncertainty over 2019 OK, asteroid threats are something we are quite switched on to, but stopping the asteroid is only part of the problem. There is a massive process of detection and mapping before the asteroid even closes in on the Earth. There are many ways we could detect an asteroid, the simplest being to point our many telescopes and radio telescopes at the sky and look for fast moving objects. However, the fundamental issue here is that the vast majority of asteroids that could pose a threat cannot be detected with these instruments. They are just too dark and small against the black backdrop of space. So if we are to increase our chances of survival, we'd need something more complex. A system of space-based telescopes might be the answer. In space, we could use satellite infrared cameras, such as those aboard the Sentinel-2 Earth Observation Satellite, which would allow us to see near-Earth objects more clearly. If we place satellites far enough away from the Earth, then our immediate region could be surveyed with far fewer exceptions going undetected. Unfortunately, there is no dedicated system of asteroid detecting satellites, so at present we are piggybacking off of other space missions for this view of our surrounding area. Once a near-Earth asteroid has been detected, it will be passed on to NASA's Near-Earth Object Department. This unit is tasked with identifying and analysing NEOs to determine the risk that each recorded object poses. They then create maps of all the objects around the Earth and can predict the orbital paths of objects with accuracy many years in advance. If an object is deemed hazardous, it will be passed to the Planetary Defence Coordination Office, or PDCO, a separate office that deals with hazards within 5 million miles of the Earth that are 30 metres in size and above. Asteroids of this size could wipe out entire cities and nations, and as such the PDCO has a role within the United States government for planning responses and evasive actions for real asteroid threats. As of 2019, the official number of near-Earth asteroids is over 19,000, and we discover roughly 30 new ones each week. Since 2013, the number of known NEOs has increased by half, and we discovered 2,000 new objects in 2017 alone. 95% of these objects are discovered by NASA and they have built a large catalogue of objects which are now all mapped, simulated and monitored to ensure there is no future threat. The problem is that no planetary telescope or radar system is able to sweep a large enough area of the sky, and even relatively close NEOs can slip under the radar. While the official number sits at 19,000, there are probably tens of thousands more hiding out there in the shadows of space. But detection is only one part of the problem. Even if you can see it, how do you actually stop a massive rock flying towards you from space several times faster than a bullet? Well, the thing about asteroid trajectories is that they are incredibly precise. Even a difference of a few meters per second in speed or a few millimeters alteration in heading can lead to a radically different path. And so, the surefire way to stop an asteroid collision is to change its speed. By essentially nudging an asteroid, 
its velocity will change, resulting in it narrowly missing the Earth and slinging past the planet, destined to fly back out into clear space. And there's even more good news. You only actually have to alter an asteroid speed by about 2 millimeters per second to sufficiently alter its path. Obviously, the approach to stopping an asteroid that instantly springs to mind would be to send a rocket into it, blow it into smithereens, changing its speed, path, mass and shape. But this isn't actually as practical as it might sound for large asteroids. If the asteroid is sufficiently massive, then an explosion could just create a meteor shower with shards of the original rock still large enough to cause significant damage, and now there are dozens of these threats. So rather than ramming into it with extreme force, we could fly a rocket up to just nudge it, while keeping it in one piece. The Double Asteroid Redirection Test, or DART, aims to do just this, but it doesn't aim to crash into the asteroid itself. This theoretical satellite will be tested on an asteroid that will pass by very closely to the Earth within a few years, and the DART satellite is going to gently nudge a smaller piece of rock that happens to be orbiting the asteroid, known as a moonlet. By changing the speed of the moonlet, its gravity will weave the asteroid due to be tested slightly off course and will stop it from passing by the Earth so closely within a few years. It's a clever piece of machinery to be sure, but not every asteroid has a moonlet orbiting it. And furthermore, the DART satellite is only really feasible for known asteroids which we predict will become hazards in the future. It's not actually that practical for hazards that emerge out of the blue, like 2019 OK did. However, this idea of altering the gravitational influence on an asteroid is promising. If we could send a rocket within a close enough range, the mutual gravity of the rocket and the asteroid might disrupt the asteroid just enough to either speed it up or slow it down by those precious 2 millimeters. This would be known as a gravity tractor, but for the spacecraft to be massive enough to have such an effect, it would require a substantial amount of fuel to get it off of the Earth and secondly keep it on track for its journey towards its destination. However, NASA have a more subtle approach. Instead of relying on the mass of the rocket to disrupt the asteroid, NASA's Asteroid Redirect Mission, or ARM, aims to employ a technique human crafts are much better at, landing on moving objects. The ARM craft will land on the surface of a very large asteroid and will either collect or dig out a rock sample from the surface. This will reduce the mass, gravity and ultimately the velocity of the asteroid in question, subtly directing it of course. On top of this, we could bring back the craft to Earth once disaster was averted and we'd have an unparalleled rock sample to analyse and learn more about asteroids, how they form and how better to avoid collisions with them. But the same problem occurs with ARM as it does with the DART satellite, it requires a lot of notice. These two satellites would be great for asteroids we knew would be threatening in the future, but if a random visitor pops out of the blue, we'd be going in a bit short-handed. So instead of sending rockets to asteroids with years of preparation, what if we could combine a space-based alert system with a ready-to-use emergency system? Well, one way to achieve such an emergency system would be through solar-powered nuclear lasers. It sounds crazy, but if we had powerful enough lasers, we could essentially zap the surface of the inbound threat. If we kept this up for a prolonged period of time, some rock would be vaporised and dislodged from the asteroid, and it would escape with momentum which would change its speed. This is where the hypothetical D-Star satellite comes in, the directed energy system for targeting of asteroids and exploration. This is essentially a plan for a satellite with a network of lasers built in. They would gather the sun's unfiltered solar energy from space and organise it into an array, and then the lasers would beam onto any inbound asteroid and start to peel away rock on the surface. This is an ingenious and futuristic solution to a potentially future problem, but like all other options, it does come with some major logistical problems. Firstly, the satellite would need to be over 5 miles across to completely destroy a sizable asteroid, and even then, it would still take over a year of beaming to break it up. To put that in perspective, the International Space Station is the most expensive thing ever to be constructed, with its current cost at just over $100 billion. The ISS is little over the size of a football field or Boeing 777 jet. A 5 mile long space station is simply unattainable at this point, from both a financial and scientific perspective. This year long vaporising mission would also create enormous amounts of space debris and it would generally cause as many problems as it solved. However, there is promise behind the idea. 
If we can refine our laser techniques, then we could make this kind of system more efficient. If we did this enough, then we eventually might be able to build a viable and cost-effective satellite with enough laser power to disintegrate just enough of an asteroid in a short time to deliver that 2mm velocity difference we need. If we could build this into a network of space telescopes which could detect NEOs more effectively, then we'd have a pretty considerable defence system. The underlying issue for all these methods though is that they require substantial notice in order to be viable. While we do track and map most of the inner solar system asteroids, we cannot account for everything. If a completely unexpected and undetected visitor emerged like the one a few weeks back, we'd be far less prepared. In fact, our only real option would be the mass evacuation of the predicted impact zone. Should something like this threaten the Earth in the near future, we will just have to hope that the asteroid is nothing larger than a city killer, because even one of those would incur billions of dollars of damage and countless lives lost and destroyed. One would like to think that we do have the technology to detect a massive planet destroying asteroid, but we simply don't know when or where such a threat could emerge from. A sensible first step in investment might be to expand our surveying techniques. The PDCO and NEOD both have plans for asteroid impacts, but they are both restricted to ground based surveillance, which just isn't that practical when dealing with surprise threats originating from the edge of the solar system. There is no space based detection system and neither are there any solid plans for one. It's unlikely to occur, but 2019 OK should have us worried. It had all the ingredients to be an unexpected catastrophe, which would have severely damaged any nation it struck. Space is vast and we just cannot account for every single object flying around out there in the darkness and it's nothing short of a miracle that we have such vast maps of known objects now given we only have ground based surveillance. It's unlikely that anything larger than a city destroyer would go undetected until a week before, but even then, that's still a city. Millions of lives are at stake. We just aren't seeing the resource and financial commitment from world governments to come up with an emergency solution because the entire prospect just feels so ridiculous. I mean, an asteroid impact? It seems so much more likely that humanity will be wiped out by unstoppable climate change or nuclear war or through super viruses. But then, you realise just how many objects are right above us out there and it leads you to the realisation that we are simply unprepared for this very real and very dangerous threat. Ultimately, the problem comes down to cost versus cost. We don't want to spend the massive amounts on an infrared detection system in space, but the threat of something like 2019-OK -OK destroying a city would incur just as many costs long term. We can take comfort from the fact that city killers appear to be the main thing as anything larger has a very low chance of going undetected. So if we are able to perfect some of the technology discussed in this video over the next decade, then we stand a much better chance of long term survival against asteroids. One can also take comfort from the fact that we don't have to do much to avoid an asteroid collision. If we did get taken by surprise by a city killer, then if all else fails we could simply fire a rocket at it to destroy it. It would create problems of its own, but they'd be some way less severe than a full sized asteroid wiping out an entire country. Our next steps must be to invest in a system of space based telescopes and a laser system. It would cost hundreds of billions, but it wouldn't be an upfront cost as opposed to a prolonged investment. If we can get the space telescopes out there, then we will dramatically improve our reach and make it much less likely that an unexpected rogue asteroid could emerge undetected. Unfortunately, it just doesn't seem like this is an issue that ranks highly enough on the global political agenda. Donald Trump seems to want a so called space force, but asteroid defence doesn't seem to figure into his plans as much as intimidating other nations does. So, in its place, NASA and other space agencies should continue to invest in more hands on methods of prevention such as the DAR and ARM satellites that will help us account for the large majority of these threats and the most catastrophic and devastating hazards. But in the meantime of all of this, we will really need to rely on luck alone and hope that threats like 2019 OK are few and far between and the asteroid with our name on it is still far enough away that, by the time it does visit us, we have the technology to defend ourselves properly. So next time you see a shooting star, just take a moment to be thankful that it is a tiny harmless lump of rock and not a massive cataclysmic bomb like the one that killed off the dinosaurs all those years ago.